the tutorial, we're going to see um, how to make our own custom images. Uh, if you have seen, probably you have seen one of them, most of my tutorials, I always use uh, a custom image like this one. In this custom image, I have uh, installed several libraries. Uh, I have installed my Kronos Manager tool. I have changed the background. And I have installed many different libraries, uh, like the blue theme that I'm using here, which is Nureas. Uh, I have installed, uh, I think, Octopus, Ephestos, and many other projects that I'm working on. So I have actually streamlined this process to make it as simple as possible to uh, download and install images. Let me show you exactly how I'm doing this. Now, let me find command line. Yeah. Okay, this is the command line. First of all, let's close this image. 7 quit. Okay, this is the command line. Yes, let's clear it. Uh, if I want to delete the directory that I have, that I have my image in order to replace it, uh, I'm doing a make clean. Now, make is a utility that is used mainly from C programming language, uh, C and C++ projects, uh, automates the compilation process. But actually, uh, because it works with bus line, you can act, do pretty much a lot of automation stuff. And in this case, we use it for building our image. So in this case, my clean, uh, as you can see it, it erases the directory uh, of ifstores, which is this is a command which can remove. RF means that it can uh, remove also uh, directories because by default, RM doesn't allow you to uh, delete directories. Now, one of the things you have to note here is that this kind of uh, uh, deletion is actually destructive. What it means is that it will not go to the trash or the trash bin or your cycle bin or whatever you have in your computer that allows you to undelete files or undelete folders. So once you delete this, there's no going back. You all have lost it. Unless, of course, you can, you're can. you using something like I'm using, like the time machine, and some kind of backup system that allows you to recover files. So remember this when you use this command. So I have deleted and then all I have to do is do make uh, make run. Now this this command is going to download the image, build the image and execute it. So as you can see it here, it already starts to download it. Uh, already it shows you here the commands, it makes a directory, this is make dear makes a directory called ifestos. It goes inside the ifestos, cd, it changes into directory of ifestos and then it uses wget with the parameter for uh, O, you can also use CRUL if you have do if you don't have uh, W yet, uh, and then it downloads a, a bus file. A bus file is from this actually a directory. Now this directory has a special meaning. It means that it downloads the latest image, uh, the latest image and the latest VM. As you can see, it has already downloaded. And one of what happens now is that I have automated the process. So in, as soon as it opens, it starts installing my own packages. So here is installing the Chrome Monos Manager. Now let's go back and take a look, another look on this. Um, so what it does here is starting downloading the best file and when he actually does launch it, uh, he actually starts to execute it. And when executed, it actually starts downloading the rest of the files. This one is the image file. Uh, well, uh, this is the VM. And this one is the sources. Now, the sources are a file that contains the, the source code because the image contains only the bytecode. And as soon as it finishes, it, uh, it uh, renames the image from a faro image to a first image. We will see why I'm doing this later. And then it executes it. This is actually the faro UI, which is the, it goes inside the first image and in first directory and executes faro UI, which basically is the graphical user interface. Uh, Faro, it means it's a Faro with a graphical interface because you can also can execute Faro without the graphical interface if you want to run it just from command line. And of course, it uses the image of ifestos. Now, if we go here, we will see still installing things. Uh, it's, uh, th in this case, is I'm installing my project ifestos, which depends on SMAC, which is actually is trying to load here. So let's take a look exactly how this is done. Uh, if I go to the website, yes. Now, I'm going to give you the link. Basically, this is the directory that I have the files you need to get things done. Uh, you can ignore this, you can ignore license and read me. This is the two files you need. Now, this file has a, is going inside, it's going inside my, uh, my home folder. You can see it 
is here, this file here. And if we go back, you can see that is uh, a simple text file. Uh, it doesn't have an extension, it still is uh, is the name make file. And it has this kind of format inside. Now let's ex explain exactly what happens here. Now this one, what these things uh, defined here is the, 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 the make commands we actually use. Now if you remember we used make run. Now what happens here is it doesn't really execute this uh, run immediately because when it happens, when it sees run here, it sees this. So what this means, it means that it triggers another setup. So when it's, you call run, what it does, it sends you in this setup here. This is one that's called ifestos, ifestos image. Now this one is the one that actually make the directory, the cd ifestos w get with so here, it renames the image and then it executes the image. Uh, one of the things you have to observe here is that you have to use tabs. If I remember, e tabs or spaces, I think it's tabs. Uh, because if you don't use tabs, it's going to give you a syntax error. This is actually how the make files work. Um, then you see I have other things, Faro stable, Faro alpha, we have here the clean, which you use earlier on to delete the folder. Uh, all of those things uh, execute simple uh, bus line commands. Now you may I wonder why actually I find these commands, where, where I can't know what kind of command to use here. If you go to faro.org, if you go to faro.org and you go to, 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 to download section, now you see here immediately it gives you a URL all WH. It's actually the same thing. Uh, see a URL is uh, the one thing you probably you already have available. In my course, for example, doesn't come with WGET, have to install it. Uh, but see URL can work too. Uh, probably it's the same command, you just don't need to use this uh, argument here, this parameter. So if you want details, this one actually downloads the stable image and the stable VM. Now, if you want some special setup, this is one actually the setups you can find here. This one are the ones I'm using is basically this one here. Okay, this one is going to the let it say the scheme that the latest Faro 6 image. I don't know why it's called it 60, it's actually 6. Uh, the script that loads the latest Faro VM for Faro 6. So, uh, now how exactly? I'm installing the packages inside uh, Faro. Now, to install packages inside Faro, there's a, a special file that calls a startup file. Now, the startup file has this name, startupfaro.st. OST here is actually the, the source code files of Smalltalk. Source code files for Smalltalk take an extension that's called st. Now, let's take a look here and see uh, what happens here. Now, this kind of file is going to go into a folder uh, that is predefined by Faro as the default folder. In my course, if I remember correctly, is library, yeah, preferences, library preferences, yeah, and uh, I have put it here inside Faro, so you can see the, the file is actually here. <coughs> Let's go back. Now, what it does here. It says Smalltalk image current short image name includes substring ifestos. Now, what this means, it actually opens the image and it finds the, the current image uh, with uh, what kind of name it has. Okay, what kind of name it has. Now, the short image file name here means that uh, it doesn't have, I think it doesn't really have the extension. So, it actually gives you only the name without the extension, if I remember correctly. Now, include substring actually tries to find a, a, a string that is part of the name. So, if the image has inside it uh, ifestos as a name, so maybe uh, ifestos uh, graphics, ifestos games, ifestos, uh, I don't know, um, developer, downloader, whatever, it's going to execute this code here. Now, if it doesn't have the name ifestos, it's actually it's going to do nothing. Now what it do is here. Now what it does here is that it loads the startup preference loader. Now the startup preference loader is the one that is responsible for doing actions whether the image while the image is booting when it's starting. So we have here the software image return default, which is the startup that comes with the image, and we tell him execute these specific actions. Now we define an action using this message here: startup action named. We give it a name. 
This one actually is more for references. It, it's not, it is not going to affect the execution of the code. More is allows you to organize and reference uh, uh, startup actions. And after that, you're going to pass a block, which block is, as you know, it is a piece of code. It's multiple lines of code that I'm using here. Now, uh, this one is an example of how to install a project from a small to hub. Okay, so as you can see here, I'm using UI Manager. UI Manager is actually a very easy graphics interface thing that pops a notification. If you remember early on, we had let's see if it finishes. Yeah, it has finished. It has popped some notification here, and uh, I say uh, I'm installing Icon Factory. Please wait. And then I'm saying, Metacello, please install me this configuration, Icon Factory. And from uh, the configuration, from this configuration, you going to install the stable version. The com this configuration is from the repo of the Smalltalk Hub user Peter Ronhang, sorry if I butchered the name, and the project is Icon Factory. So it's going to go to Smalltalk Hub, it's going to find Peter, uh, Peter uh, inside it, Inside the Peter, it's going to find his project, it's called Icon Factory, and it's going to load the configuration, and then it's going to execute the stable configuration so it can load the stable version. Now, because I'm no longer depend on Icon Factory because I started, uh, actually Icon Factory is a, is, a, is a library that allows you to uh, insert images, uh, take any kind of image file and convert it into a Faro icon, or a Faro on a, I think Farrow image, which can, you can use from inside, uh, uh, from inside Farrow. So it's a converter in, in essence. Uh, it converts the binary data to, uh, to a string that encodes binary data. So pretty much it, it takes images, and it takes graphic images and allows them to be stored inside the image uh, in the source code uh, format. So what I'm doing here, I'm actually installing my own kind of project. I have uh, one, two, three, four projects. If you see each time I'm using EU Manager to make this notification uh, message here that pops up, please wait installing Chronos Manager. And then I'm using Metacello new baseline, Chronos Manager repository, blah, 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 load. What it means here is that says, first of all, I'm telling you what kind of baseline I'm going to use and where to find this baseline. So if I go to Chronos Manager, let's see if I have, can go to Chronos Manager like now. If I go to Chronos Manager, this is the repository, uh, yeah, here, okay. You see, I have a baseline here. Now, this one is actually the baseline. It's actually a very simple class uh, that, I think it's an instance side, yeah, which has only one instance method, which is this one, okay, which actually this one is uh, installing a, a configuration of Faro. Okay, of oh, our sound, sorry. So, this one is the one I'm loading. And, well, yeah. And from there on, I'm doing actually the same thing. Yeah. Actually, this one code must go. I don't know why. I forgot to remove it purposely. It doesn't, it's not really necessary. Because when I started, actually, I was using transcript instead of uh, notifications. So it's doing exactly the same thing for Ephestos, for Octopus, etc., etc. And in the end, it informs me that all libraries have been installed. Now, after that, I'm actually executing my own uh, uh, utility, which is called Nereas theme, which actually installs um, the Nereas theme, that blue theme you're seeing. It opens the Chronos Manager. And I'm saying here, after the block, which contains all this startup, startup code, I'm telling run it once. So that means that it's going to execute once. That means that the next time I open the image, it's not going to reinstall all the packages from start. Now, what happens if I want an action that happens every time I open an image? Well, one of the things that I'm doing when I open an image is to change the graphics file. Now, let's take a look at it, how this actually applies. Let's see. So let's save this. Save and quit. Let's go back. Let's take a look at what we're doing here on early on. Oops, I don't want this. And let's do it, make run. Run, run. The same image. Okay, sometimes it's using the same image. Let's see if now it works. Nope, why? Seven quit. Let's say why. 
pictures. Uh, so let's see if I no. no. JPEG. Yeah, probably because I haven't found mo more JPEGs inside here. Uh, well, yeah, it, it needs more JPEGs. So let's see if I'm, we can find. We have cartoon rocket here. What does it say here? This one. Let's try once more. Uh, nope. Okay. So the the, the whole idea here. Uh, I have to actually put some files inside it. The whole idea here is that it goes. Uh, it's actually starting an action that's called random wallpaper, and it passes. Um, uh, a block as we did earlier on. Uh, in this block, I define two uh, temporary libraries, files and path. The path I'm using is my path in a pictures folder. Let's see if the folder exists, just in case. Kill long pictures. Yeah, and uh, and as file references, it's actually. Uh, converses the string, it actually fetches the file itself, the director in this case. So if the path exists, I'm assigning here if the bus all, all indeed exists, if it's true, then the files is the children of, of the path. So the children actually are um, all the files that contain inside the folder. And we examine each file with this select, with probably selecting. It's choosing specific files that for, for, uh, fulfill the specific condition, and this condition here is uh, that uh, its base name ends with. Let me resize this because we cannot see this. Um, its baseline ends with. Um, no, no, no. Come on, come on, come on, baby. Yeah, sometimes. So it's time f with uh, JPEG or a PNG. So actually, it's going to try to find either PNG or JPEGs. And Smalltalk image OS is macOS X. If it detects that is a macOS X, then it's going to. I know why it doesn't work. It doesn't work because I haven't updated the startup file in my folder. Actually, this one is the startup file from the repository. Uh, Word background image. Uh, so in the Word. In the world, it's going to use a background image as long as the, we are in macOS. So actually, you can define different behaviors if you are in a macOS setup or you have a Linux setup. This is actually a nice trick to use that. And then what you do is you create a form which is from file name and from far from, from the files you collected, you collect. You actually pick um, uh, one of the files with a full name, which actually is going to contain the path and the extension of the file. And then you define lay now scale, which means that uh, it's going to scale so it actually fits and stretches to the corners of the uh, of the image. So let's copy paste that. Now I know what's going wrong. Let's copy paste that. Okay. And let's go to the file we say early on, which is Kilon library preferences. <laughs> References, yeah, Faro, 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 yep. And let's open it in Emacs. I don't have, I only have to double click it. Okay, so this one is here, it's open in Emacs. And let's go, yep, this one. That's why it doesn't work because I don't only really have the code here. So I'm going to just, oh, let's not, let's copy paste now the part that put down here. The core thing, startup action, name, random wallpaper, and and uh, yeah, and the last one, yeah, I don't have to do this, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. So up to here, nope, here, copy. Let's go here and let's change that. Uh, control X, very nice. Control X, Control S. So now it's saved. And if I go back here and I'm doing make run, so now it should work. Yep, and now it works. 
because I have added the code I was talking about earlier on. And if you take a look here, seven quit, and open it once more, you will see that each time it opens a different image. So that's exactly how you can build your own image. That's the each time you can actually uh, do and uh, set up your own kind of images. You can build your own images, you can install your own packages. Uh, the nice thing about the Mac file, it uh, allows you to build uh, different kinds of images. As we earlier said on, we have a Mac Faro stable, for example. And in this Mac Faro stable, I'm downloading Faro 5 and not Faro 6. And uh, yeah, this means that it has already the folder. So let's make a Faro stable clean, I think it is. Or not. No, wait a second. Let's do it manually. Uh, ref uh, Faro stable. Okay, and let's make Faro stable. All right. And now it's going to download uh, Faro 5. And uh, if you're going to see now that it's, going, it's not going to install anything because uh, the image is not renamed into uh, Ephesus image. So th this is why the startup uh, action doesn't trigger, but it should trigger no, it sounds, and it will not even trigger the background change because if you remember, it's all inside the condition that it's named Ephesus image. So here is a Faro 5. You see that we haven't really installed anything and it just fetched a standard Faro 5 image. So that's exactly a way to build your own images locally. And uh, of course, you can do it in the background as well. You can, you know, make multiple downloads, you can open multiple images, doesn't necessarily have to open only one image. You can make, say, say to the Mac file, download me this image, open it and set it up. So you can continue to work on existing Faro image and as soon as you finish, uh, you can have five different images already built up, one for your graphics, one for games, one for Faro 5, one for Faro 6, one for web development, one for database development, and this way, uh, you can do all this in the background and you don't really have to wait for the build process to finish. You can continue using your own Faro image, doing your own stuff when this is working in the background. So I think that's all there is. There is other ways to do those stuff. Uh, I haven't really investigated yet. For example, I'm using GitLab lately, uh, which is like GitHub, but GitLab has this specific characteristic. It allows you to Use to enter a YML uh, file into a, Git, a GitLab uh, page. What it means basically is that each time you have a GitHub repository, uh, it allows you to have a web page for uh, that uh, uh, for that GitHub repository. So, for example, my website is www.kilon.alios. Hello which is actually building lately, it uses actually this process. So this actually is a GitLab repository that is built by GitLab automatically. How is doing this? I'm using a set, a, a, what's called a YAML set, a, a YAML or something like that, YAML setup, which is, again, it's pretty much the best stuff we were talking about earlier on. Here is actually fetches a Python image, which I don't really need. And what is this? No, that's one the, the one. Huh? Yes, see. And uh, after that, you can execute uh, specific scripts. Let me take a look here. The projects. Let me take a look. You can ex execute specific uh, scripts that allow you to build uh, an image in 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 uh, in, the, in in your own server. Actually, they're using, uh, if I remember correctly, they're using some kind of uh, cloud service. And uh, they do this each time you make a commit. So if you have a project and you make commits and you want to test this project that it works and you want to build it each time, you can use something like this. And Faro also offers its own, uh, this, this was actually called, it's called continuous integration. It's called continuous integration because each time you make a commit, it actually rebuilds the whole image and run the tests to make sure that everything works all right. So, CI, if I remember correctly, must be. Jenkins, yep, that's one. And here is the Faro Jenkins. Uh, yeah, 
And you can log in here, you can create your own account. Uh, you have to ask the mailist how you do that because I forgot it. And as you can see here, we have several different, several different uh, projects. Let's see. Faro Voodoo, uh, Faro Windows 2, Web Start. Uh, let's see what kind of orders we have here. Yeah, that's for example is an image that now is building. Uh, Faro 6. Yeah. And you can actually take a look is even in the console while building. So this is actually an image that has been uh, receiving a commit and a repository that has been receiving a commit and it's built the image automatically for you. So when you go and download it like we have done early on, you get the image with the libraries uh, all pre-installed. And if I remember correctly, Faro Launcher, which have, we have described in a previous video tutorial, can fetch images from here, from Jenkins. So this is actually a very clever process if you have a lot of libraries, you work in a very complex project like I'm working currently because I'm making a lot of different stuff with 3D graphics and my music and sound and uh, all this kind of stuff and I'm depending with a lot of different libraries. With Pillar, I'm depending on Morphic, I'm depending on, uh, as you can see really on the Icon Factory, uh, I have my own socket bridge with Python and I'm working, working a certain memory for with C++. So all these things are very tedious to do it with, with by hand, to install it by hand. So if you if, if each time I make a commit, I don't really have to run this make file that I was doing earlier on. It's it's done here in this case automatically because it can detect a commit when it happens in GitHub. And this kind of commits are called web hoops and it can fetch this commit and then it can rebuild the image, uh, run the tests, make sure that everything works right. And if it works right, it matches as green. And that's it says to you, here is the image, take it, it's ready for you to use. That's it. I don't have anything more to add. Well, this one is a, was a long tutorial, but I think that you got a very good idea how to build your own images, how to automate the process of building an image, and how to automate also the startup of the image. This is actually, the startup we actually use here is also very useful, not just for building images, but if you deploy applications. If each time you do a startup, you don't want to do a cleanup of the image, or you have to manage the kind of data that inside the image, before the user start executing the, executing the application of the change in the image, a startup action can really help. And that's not the only way to do this. Another way to do this is, uh, let's say, make run to take a look again. Another way of doing this is if you go here, uh, size, uh, no, sorry, if there is, there are two methods. There are two methods, no start actions, methods, startup. Yeah, they're defined in the behavior, which are, we go to startup. This message is sent to register classes when the system is coming up. So it's time the system comes up, it's time the image boots. First, I think first is going to execute the startup uh, script we described later on. Later, it's going to execute this method here. So if you have a class that has this method in here, it's going to be, this method is going to be executed each time the system starts. And there's also a shutdown, which here, uh, this is one is executed when you save an image and you quit, or when you quit without saving an image. So this, this actually, um, two methods, can, you can use them to uh, register behavior that happens when the image starts and when the image closes. So that's all for now. Uh, I don't have anything more to add. Uh, that's actually the build process. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and as always, see you on the next tutorial.